Greetings, 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 and welcome to Heal Talk Tuesdays with Lisa. It's so good to be here with you, isn't it? How are you doing? Today is going to be such a different way, a different topic. Well, actually, it is the same topic uh, in a different format. I wanted to say uh, thank you for all the emails i had messages that i have been receiving i even got a call from uh, my last week's message um, that i shared and i thank you so i think uh, even though we are not having many comments right here on facebook uh, i am getting results by uh, folks who are calling in and I welcome you to do the same. My name is Lisa Bubari, and for those of you who do not know me, uh, I'm a clinical hypnotherapist by trade, and for the last 22 years after a transformation of my own, I started in this realm of what I call healing, an alternative healing, or some say it, it is an augmentation to the Western world, but it is called the world of hypnosis and hypnotherapy. Throughout the years, um, I have added more certification as far as it goes with stress management, anger management, domestic abuse, and different techniques, NLP. But those are what? Yes, there are um, tools, there are techniques, and bottom line is we all want to feel good and we all want to make a change for the better in our life and that's what I help with so so many hi Siddha John how are you so many have asked me can you share what hypnosis is and because uh, there are so many who have this uh, a lot of there are a lot of myths and misconceptions and i decided to take the time and just go over some basics about what is hypnosis so before i do that because it is very concise very it's called self-awareness and I got into this world because of I healed myself through hypnotherapy and I no longer needed to have my own um, surgery, the third surgery for ovarian cysts. And I've shared this information and story many, many times. And that was my, the time that it shifted me, that I left the field of the legal field that I wanted to be an attorney to be in this field of healing so when you hear the word hypnosis what comes to your mind you know a lot of people think it is this magical mystical supernatural way uh, a lot of I've had even people go oh no and another person is like, don't look into my eyes. So we all have this misconception about hypnosis. Did you know that you go in and out of hypnosis every single day? You do. Another word for hypnosis is trance state or being in that zone. So you may visualize a stage where people are being hypnotized and there's chairs and the hypnotist has the smoke or fog and he just and i'm saying he because most hypnotists are men whereas many many years ago we had uh pat the hip hypnotist and pat collins used to be so famous because she used to do a lot of stage and you may have even gone to her shows or any anything and she was based in los angeles but she traveled all over yes she was quite uh quite famous but the chairs that they put in there and i want to go back and say there are in order for anyone to be hypnotized there are two things that must be in place 
One is called consent, and the other one is that they will not be hypnotized. It's called fear. So fear of what may happen, and I'm going to go over some of the myths. And the other one is that they will not give consent. So the people who go up on stage and the hypnotist asks, who wants to be hypnotized? A uh, show of hands, right? And the people who say yes and others are egging them on, yeah, 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 this person, and they say, well, reluctantly, but they still go up, is because they just gave consent to go up that stage, to sit in that chair, and although they might be hesitant of what's going to happen uh, at that time, uh, what happens is the hypnotist starts doing some kind of a uh, evaluation of who is more hypnotizable because they want the show to be a success. You know what? It's showtime. The difference between that and coming to a session where I've been practicing as a clinical hypnotherapist is most clients come to me for making a shift changing a habit or a behavior. And I'm going to go over all that in just a moment. So, where did this hypnosis start? It's a common experience that we go through. Let me give you an example. Have you ever sat in front of the TV and the commercial comes on and you might be so tired and as the commercial comes on, you just go into that dozing state. You doze off. And as the movie comes on, you get up, watch the movie, commercial time, you doze off. Or sometimes if the movie is boring and not to your taste, or you're tired, you go into that doze state. Yet, your subconscious mind hears everything. Here's the commercials, and that is why most commercials have a music and a jingle. Even TV, soap. They have a jingle. Just like Jeopardy. Dun 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 right? We all know the jingles. So that jingle, without even me saying the word, has already been um, ingrained in my subconscious. Why? Because even if I'm not paying attention. Even if I am sitting in the background and not watching TV, my brain, the subconscious mind, over and over, if, if someone like my grandmother used to watch Jeopardy and A Wheel of Fortune, we know the jingles by heart. We know the jingles by, for the, the comedies and the cartoons we used to watch as children. Children remember everything. So, allow me to say that from day one you are born until seven, eight years old, the first uh, years of you, we are so susceptible, just like a sponge. We take everything in. Children take in everything. It's like, what's that? What's that? Why is this? So all these questions is why? Because our mind is in two format. It's in two parts, not formats. Uh, consciously and subconsciously. So our conscious mind looks, listens, and learns. Our subconscious mind stores all that information, replays all that information, and functions your entire bodily function automatically. Everything is done without you thinking about it. So. Just imagine um, when a person is injured and they don't feel pain because they are so engaged in what they are doing. I mean, they bang, but they are still running. Running to get to where they want to go is so, more imp so much more important than that moment of being banged or hit. Okay. After they get to it, afterwards, they see that bruise and they go, where did that come from? And then they remember, oh yeah, I banged my foot. Or people in sports, they get injured all the time. But you know what? 
the game is more important until the situation is in crisis. Then they stop the game and they tend to the injured person. So, the same thing as when you get into your car, you turn the engine on and you go to your destination without thinking about it because your subconscious mind has already set the information and it knows from A to Z where to be. So, a child experiences a reduction, a pain response to what? We all do this. When they get injured and the mom comes and is like, Oh, my dear. And if it's their finger or a part, they hug them, they kiss them, and they go, You know what? It's all much better, so much better now. And that moment of tending to the injury, to something that could have been painful, stops the crying. They feel safe. They feel validated. And even after a cry, the cry does not last as long when they are cuddled and pampered. The history of hypnosis comes from a long, 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 long time ago. You all have heard the word mesmerized. Just like lovers, when they are gazing at each other and they feel as if they are mesmerized. It started by a gentleman by the name of Dr. Franz Anton Mesmer that it was in the 17th century and who was influenced by two others, uh, Catholic priests, after a prayer and everything. And he said it was something like, oh my God, they are mesmerized. And that in itself started the word of mesmerism, which is pure focused attention on one thing. But the word hypnosis was coined by Dr. James Braid in 17, late 1700s that he, um, he coined the word hypnosis thinking because it's a Greek word which is a, he equi uh, equated to the word sleep. You know how even the stage hypnotist goes like sleep, sleep, sleep. And the power of the voice plus the attention and the techniques that they use and the rapid induction is also like that. And that's where I studied with Dr. Um, well, he was not a doctor, but uh, our professor, uh, master uh, hypnotist, Gil Boyne, where he also uh, coined and founded one of the techniques called rapid induction, that he would just go and just say, are you ready? He would touch or do a tap and he would go, and they would drop. Yes. See, it's the power in the voice that also shocks from being ready from that moment to another. And then uh, as the shock happens, um, it's not a bad shock. It's just not expected that someone goes into that state and then the, the verbiage that is spoken after that, that you can now release and relax and let go. Every nerve and every muscle, every organ, every tissue is now relaxing. And the sound and everything about the master hypnotist of show makes that become absolutely mesmerizing. Ha! You didn't think I have it in me. Well... I have used rapid in induction many times, but that is not how I do it. That is not how I practice in my office. So in my office, we do mostly the progressive, which is sitting at my recliner and relaxing from head to toe, or just asking my client, which could be you, just close your eyes and listen to the sound of my voice. And as you give yourself permission, and that's how I begin. And it has been many times that I have done a, 
a small little uh, relaxation right here live on uh, Facebook and I was asked if I would do another one so that everyone can go into a state of relaxation right here on Facebook all my audiences or even as you are following me subscribing on YouTube by all means please do um, so that's those are the things that I wanted to say that it has happened and now so many uh, doctors psychologists surgeons uh, medical offices hospitals are utilizing hypnosis for many aspects of pain management um, anxiety panic and anxiety to calm the patient down we work with patients with insomnia IBS um, what else when it comes to patient um, blood pressure you we bring the blood pressure down fears and phobias are huge because if someone has a fear of needle we can help them have absolutely no more fear of needle fear of dentistry fear of surgery all those fears are what what's going to happen to me and a client or a patient projects the worst things the worst scenarios even moms who are going to go into delivery sometimes they project all these um, worst scenarios I hope this makes sense so let me uh, give you some of the myths and overcome and explain some of the myths and one of the biggest myths is although it can serve many of the useful things one of the myths is uh, someone was asking me when hypnotized am I asleep no because that's not true as I said you go into this um, dozing off you hear everything and you can also respond to all the questions that I ask uh, it's like Adrian says good deal I'm all ears as uh, he says love the comparison to comparison to children oh okay dune the voice yes the movie dune the voice what was it Mo mulberry mm. so it is the power of the voice so allow me to continue with the misconceptions and then if there was any questions i'll be more than happy to so the first one you are not asleep because you can hear everything and respond to me especially when i am doing um, a therapy in my office um, and you can respond either we give a choice I give a choice you can respond verbally or you can respond by picking one of your fingers I ask as you are in that calm state just choose a finger that's a yes finger and when I ask you any question you can automatically either respond by voice speak it or just use any of your fingers and by all means most of the time automotive uh, auditory this becomes the way of communication because they are in such a relaxed state that no one really wants to speak until we go deeper and deeper into that state of hypnosis to do the therapy and then I want them to voice it express it so the second thing is when uh, a person may not come out of that state of hypnosis well that is not true because if that was the case then I would have piles of people uh, every day uh, when I see clients two or three clients a day then I would have a pile of clients over here of course that is not true because um, when we take you into that state and guide you into a state of deep re relaxation we also bring you to full conscious awareness and to that awake state because the awareness happens you are more profoundly aware of everything what you feel what's going on everything that surrounds you even right here right now as i am speaking to you and you are listening to my voice i want you to become more aware of everything that surrounds you and focus on certain things and it can be
your breath in, saying yes, yes. Exhaling, it can be the sound of the AC. It can be the ticking of a clock, the humming of birds. And if you were sitting somewhere, even becoming aware of the chair that you were sitting on, that holds your weight, if it swivels, where your legs are, mine are crossed. If your feet, the shoes you are wearing, if you have socks, or is it a sandal, what kind of a sandal you're wearing? What is the bottom of your feet? Or are you just barefoot sitting right there? Becoming aware of everything that's called full awareness and that's what we do we take you into that state of deep relaxation and bring you to full conscious awakeness and the third thing is when someone is in hypnosis do they obey everything well that's not true because although that's a fiction in movies and everything and if when you are in the military and everything is ingrained and you do it so many times just like having that jingle um those are some of them are subliminal like videos that you watch the subliminal messaging can be postings right even i ask my clients to do post-it notes and place it on their door on their mirror or something like that and those could be messages that are empowering them that is uplifting that are messages like if they want to drop the weight and what is their ideal weight let's say if i have a client who comes in and they weigh 170 pounds and uh, they want to be 140 so the ideal weight is 140 and I ask them to put a uh, post-it note all over on their car and the wheel. I love my body. My body image is shifting. 140 is my ideal number. 140 is my ideal number. And 140 becomes their ideal number, right? And without realizing the mind, the conscious mind and the subconscious mind, start working on that number. And just like sitting in the car and where the destination you want to go, you don't think about, oh, do I hold the wheel this way or this way? Uh, do I turn the uh, radio on? Don't talk to me because I have to concentrate. In the beginning, that's how we do it. But once we learn how to drive after a few months or even years, you don't think that way. Unless there's something wrong with the car and it's like giving you problems or there is no gas and the light goes on or there's something wrong with the engine the light goes on those are called indications like your body saying hey there is a disconnect this is there's pain right that's how i look at it there is the car the light goes off and on and you pay attention to it otherwise you put the gas you get into the car and you go from one place to another so that's how our subconscious works just tell me where you want to go, what you want to do, what you want to be, and consciously and subconsciously, once there is an agreement, once we bypass all the blocks and self-limiting beliefs, when you peel away all the uh, the the whys and what what you covered yourself with, peel away all the the weight and the things that weigh you down, right? Once we bypass all the things that we added on only not to feel or not to do and to cocoon ourselves because this was more, more comfortable than moving forward, that's when the numbers start working. Now, another one is... Uh, 
another misconception can be is there any danger is this against religion hypnosis has nothing to do with religion it doesn't matter what your religion is hypnosis is something that you go in and out every single day it's another word for guided visualization it's another word for self uh, actualization and meditation but in meditation we do something that we all the thoughts that come we release we clear our mind and with hypnosis we have an aim we delve deep within uh, or sometimes very shallow it doesn't have to be very deep it can be very light hypnosis and you just shift that emotional connection to that habit or behavior or that something that was needed to change and can be from this why you're doing this can be from smoking stress biting uh, a lot of things that are created through stress and stress can and has been the number one killer in our life for the first 21st century so another one is well that hypnosis uh, once that change happens will it last for a lifetime sometimes it will if the transformation and the breakthrough was powerful you no longer need to um, if you stop doing this because you realize well that's very soothing as a kid as a child but as an adult you no longer need to sit in front of someone and do this and i'm not by all means i'm not i'm just saying if it, someone comes and says this is one of my habits i want to stop or chewing my nails because they bleed and i want my nails to look good um and i don't want to buy bite my cuticles anymore or they bite their nails to a point that it bleeds um or it could be someone who is doing cutting why are they doing cutting a lot of things that is called self punishment we stop them by first understanding what is the trigger why you started it what was the benefit that you still hold on to it and it's become a comfort level just like smoking or anything else it could be wrong for other people but for you it's good until it's no longer benefiting you so another misconception is um is it people who are have to be weak-minded or do you have to be highly intelligent it doesn't matter and who said one is a weak-minded one is intelligent if children at the age of seven can go into hypnosis which they do go in and out of hypnosis all the time i mean they get so focused and playful and as adults we forget to play and just be you see our mind plays trick on us and i'm becoming the therapist again but it's just information because we function in constantly being in what happened in our memory bank of i want to go back to uh i was like this i want that life or i don't want that anymore or what's going to happen in the future and we start worrying and get becoming more anxious and when we become anxious and worried then the body will have to react to it and there comes the cycle of anxiety and worry perpetration and then the heart starts pumping and then you get anxious the sweaty hands you see i'm talking about it <sighs> so has nothing to do with the intelligence but when you are more open and consenting it is so much better and more profound that's it and we do bypass the fear of factors um it has nothing to do with religion so what is it used for what are the benefits 
and I will give the benefits real fast. Uh, improves memory, concentration, study habits. People who want to take a test may have failed the bar exam or MedCap or even securities exam. And uh, they're like, you know what? There's, there is a block. I need to focus better. I've worked with police officers with better, high, uh, more focused and uh, better aim shooting. Um, I even had a gambler who came in and a professional gambler and said I need to focus better and stay up longer because of sometimes insomnia hits me and I need to be more focused when I am going to the tournament that I need to go. Um, golfers use it, pro players, athletes use hypnosis, focused attention at all times because they have to step into, step into what it is that they want to achieve, not what they are afraid of or what it can happen. Um, I mean, can you just imagine a gold medalist thinking, who's behind me? Are they reaching me? Or am I, are they uh, going to bypass me? No. Their only one and one intention is, I want to break my own record. And the moment I uh, dive into that water, I am one with my body, with one with the sound of the wave, one with that water, and I am breaking through. I am becoming one speed. So, do you see? That's called precise milliseconds. Milliseconds. That's where the gold and the silver separate. So that person is not there with any doubt but what that person, he or she wants to achieve. She or he wants to achieve. So it also gets uh, rid of uh, habits and uh, things that we no longer want, nor enhancing our health or life. Uh, improves confidence and more than confidence, I like to say I work with self-esteem what you believe in yourself, your worth, your value, once you know that, then the confidence starts building up because you learn confidence and it's from the outside, whereas self-esteem is an internal self-worth. Uh, so once you know this is what you want, your body, your everything, then you become it. And yes, it works incredibly well with relaxation, releasing stress, and uh, overcoming fears, phobias, even public speaking. So many fear. The number one uh, fear is public speaking. And for those of you who are with, uh, if you don't know anything about it, uh, there's such a uh, networking nowadays. It's uh, for Androids, now it's opening for everyone. Actually, it was for iPhone users and now opening for Android users. Uh, it's called Clubhouse. Clubhouse is all voice. It is how you speak, how you uh, share uh, and how you bring value to certain rooms and everything. So it is all auditory. And for people who have been afraid of speaking, oh my God, the best platform to voice and express uh, with dignity and you can start awkward and then you will see everyone says, it's okay, go ahead and share, go ahead and express. So those are some of the myths and I wanted to share and I wanted to speak. Um, by all means, if you have any questions, uh, I'm here for you. Let us talk about it. Uh, I'm here to share anything that you want, uh, commonality. So are there any questions? How long does it usually take to clear a habit you no longer want? Uh, it, it all depends. Um, everyone is different. There is no uh, cookie cutter uh, technique. It's uh, self-awareness, is self-acceptance and all that you are. And uh, it could be, I've had a client who wanted to um, drop their weight 
and they progressed real fast and another person because there was deeper things that they were working on not only the weight it was how they were holding on to the weight and another person can come in for insomnia and within two sessions they can sleep deeply and profoundly for about seven eight hours so everything is up to you not the therapist the therapist is nothing but a guide i hope some of those uh, breaking some of those myths was beneficial for you and yes we take you into that profound state of relaxation but not sleep state and yet hypnosis in greek word is sleep so here's one thing i will say each and every night when you go to sleep if you do pray in a way you are focusing and getting out of your way doing a prayer for others for the health of others your loved ones and asking maybe god universe to keep them safe and that in itself is a suggestion it's a subliminal suggestion that you also do and a prayer also safeguards so the same way as i end each and every episode by saying may god bless you and the universal light surround you i hope that you subscribe to my youtube channel if this was beneficial to you by all means please do share it i am always here to respond to your emails and starting may we're starting a whole new uh platform not a platform but a format and inviting guests to come on bringing you more value uh, because that is my intention until next week i bid you goodbye and see you then god bless spring forward this is lisa